Situational and contingency leadership theories recognise that an almost infinite array of contextual factors surround leaders and followers as they go about working towards particular goals. For example, the relative social status of leaders and followers, their relative positional and personal power, and the internal operating environment and political, economic, technological, environmental and legal factors from the external environment that might be in play in any given situation. And this is just to name a few. The major outcome of this theory was the recognition that leadership requires an understanding and acknowledgement of the environment in which leadership is taking place and this, in turn, will inform the leader with regard to what kinds of leader traits, skills, influence and behaviours are likely to cause effective leadership. Perhaps just as importantly, it was suggested that particular kinds of situations invariably throw up leaders who are required by groups to help them navigate these circumstances. And if one leader were to leave, another would, by necessity, arise to take their place. In the early theories of this era, leaders were thought to be more or less required, depending on the specific circumstances, particularly if a group needed to be taken from one state to another. Later it was also recognised that at all times before, during and after this change, the leader and the followers each had social status issues that would impact upon the leadership equation. And also that there were expectations about the roles that leaders should play in this process held by followers and the roles that followers should play held by the leader. Researchers such as Trist and Bamforth were among the first to recognise that through these processes, followers also have an influence upon leaders. Up to this point, each of the theories emerged pretty much in isolation. Each of them tried to explain the leadership equation, but separately they had failed. The next phase of leadership theory leads us to the last 50 years, where it has been recognised that leadership is not a pure form of any of the previous theories, but rather a synthesis of them. This meant that leadership was contingent or concurrently dependent upon behaviour, personality, influence and situation. With few exceptions, all of the leadership theories to emerge since the onset of the contingency era are models built on the contingency theory. Three of the most notable theories of this era were Fiedler's contingency theory, House's path goal theory, and Vroom and Yetten's normative theory of decision making. Fiedler believed that a leader's traits or characteristics and the way in which they applied these behaviourally were fairly static and therefore leaders needed to be placed in particular situations which suited these characteristics. Or alternatively, leaders must be trained to manipulate situations in order to change them to suit their particular style. House, on the other hand, focused upon a different contingency. He focused upon the need for leaders to provide subordinates or followers with clear pathways to success. The role of the leader was to define the goal, clarify a path or paths towards the goal, to remove obstacles in the path for followers and to provide support for followers along the way. Vroom and Yetten took yet another contingency into account, leader decision-making processes. Their work consisted of advising leaders about which kinds of decision-making behaviours would more likely result in acceptable or high-quality outcomes based upon particular situations. The appeal of Vroom and Yetten's model was obvious for managers because it provided a formula for leader effectiveness that was independent of the leader's traits and or their degree of power and influence. While many contingency theories have proven to be valid and reliable and are still used in contemporary leadership studies, there are some obvious drawbacks. The first is that each of the theories is very different from the other and concerned with different facets of the leadership equation. Secondly, while they are useful as mental code hooks for leaders to consider, they are too unwieldy for day-to-day -day managerial practice. For example, there is a computer program available to aid managers in the use of Vroom's normative decision-making model. However, leaders often need to make decisions on the spot and cannot retreat to their office to pull out a computer model. So, while this era was in many ways the breakthrough era for leadership theory, insofar as recognising the contingency of leadership, there was still much to understand about the interactions between these contingencies.